A lack of affordable housing continues around the state and here in Kern County, but a solution to the problem isn't simple. 23 ABC's Keely Van Middendorp took an in-depth look at what progress developers in Kern County have made despite a number of difficulties. It was built, uh, it was a, the first retirement home in the history of the United States for uh, retired farm workers. In 1974, Cesar Chavez dedicated the Palo Agbayani village to Filipino farm workers who were the first to join his fight for better working and living conditions. They always said that Agbayani was like a five-star hotel for them in comparison to the labor camps. It was here at the Palo Agbayani village where Cesar Chavez would continue to ensure the Manongs live the rest of their days with the dignity that they had fought so tirelessly for. Due to the anti-miscegenation laws, they weren't allowed to marry outside of their race. No opportunity to start a family meant no place to go before Agbayani was built. The community wasn't thinking about all these older people that were farm workers and what was going to happen to them once they got old. Ben Abad, his brother was the one who was the last um, man to live here. While the original tenants of Agbayani village have passed, oh, hey, hey. Cesar Chavez's mission to create quality, affordable housing continues with places like Casa de Eva. <laughs> Paul Chavez, Cesar's son, says rent is on average $300 a month. We look for ways to address those needs that people have as humans, and we think that if we can approach the housing needs and the human needs that people have, then you can build a community where people can, uh, can thrive. And, uh, and live uh, live good lives. Residents like Martha Mendoza tell me she's able to remain active and independent here and says it's not only a home, but also a haven. We're safe. How is the world now? For us seniors. If Casa de Eva is there, so we're gonna build this, where will we be at? But other seniors aren't finding themselves in low cost, amenity packed facilities like Casa de Eva. The California Housing Partnership, an organization created by the state legislature, found from 2020 to 2021 rent increased by 12 percent in Kern, and the lowest earning residents spent more than half of their income on rent each month. Heather Kimmel with the Housing Authority of Kern believes not addressing that disparity creates a negative ripple effect. I mean, there's this, this huge correlation between being overly rent burdened and negative impacts to the family and the community as a whole. President and CEO of the housing partnership, Matt Schwartz, says the need for low-income homes isn't keeping up with demand and believes a big part of the problem is the fact that affordable housing isn't considered essential to California's infrastructure. We don't treat it at a state level the way we treat transportation and education resources. and or healthcare, and we have to, it's related. The lack of recognition means long-term funding solutions from the state don't exist. That's something Schwartz says needs to change. That is a huge mistake, it's an oversight, and we have to correct it. He says it's up to California, not Congress, to find financial solutions to the housing crisis following drastic federal spending cuts in the 1980s that barred Congress from significantly increasing money the federal government could award to states for low-income housing. The state has been left to really pick up the pieces. It makes the state's job and local government's job very, very difficult. Developers looking for funds to build affordable homes oftentimes work with more than a half dozen sources just to complete one project. We've been at this for a while and it's it's never been as difficult as it is today to build affordable housing. California currently has five state agencies that award housing subsidies and grants. But Chavez and the Housing Partnership believe having a single source that disperses funds would save time and money. That could cut a lot of red tape. It could make projects faster. By making them faster, it makes them more affordable. And we found that each time a housing provider has to apply to a different state agency, it adds $15,000 per door to the cost of producing a new affordable home. Some progress has been made. A one cent sales tax passed in 2018 by voters enabled the city of Bakersfield to pool more money towards issues like housing, which has helped the area's largest developer 
pick up production. From 2019 through uh, through 2024, we're planning to bring online a little over 1,100 units. So in that span of window of production, that's more units that we produced in that time frame than our agency did as a whole in like the last uh, 15 years. Also, the Housing Partnership found in 2020, state and federal funding for housing production and preservation in Kern County increased 24 percent from 2019. And while an improvement, Schwartz believes there is a way to completely eliminate the shortage in California. There's 57 policy solutions, some of which are federal, but most of which are state and under state control. In the meantime, developers like the Cesar Chavez Foundation continue efforts to house working families and seniors. It is difficult. Uh, but it's not impossible. You just got to work a little bit harder. But say conversations around solutions must continue. It's going to take government. It's going to take um, at, at all levels. It's going to take business. It's going to take labor and the goodwill of a lot of uh, affordable housing providers to, to sit down and, and wrestle with this and, and, you know, address the different aspects of it. La vida es la ruleta. In Bakersfield, Keely Van Middendorp, 23ABC News, connecting you.